So I want to do a video here on firebush, Amelia patens. Um, there's a lot of firebush out there that is sold in the nursery trade. It's a pretty common plant nowadays. Um, this is it here in front of me. There is a Mexican version of a firebush and there is the native Florida variety. This is a kind of a subtropical species. It's not really hardy, frost hardy. So if you get real, if you get down below, you know, frost level, it's going to get burnt back, but it, it comes back every time. I've, I've only had it get cold enough once to do any damage and it got down to like 27 or something like that. But the native variety and the non-native variety, a lot of times the non-native variety is sold as the native variety. So I like to have the native variety. One of the, the biggest things you can tell the difference between the two is the flowers. The native firebush has this very, like it's almost fully red. Here it's a flower here, I'll pick it off. It's completely red and it's more like tubular shaped. Um, the leaf is also a little larger on the native varieties. I have a ton of firebush. Um, this is a native one. This came from a cutting from a plant that was in a hammock that we were developing next to at a, one of my previous jobs in Manatee County near Parrish, um, Ellington Parish area. Here's another one. This came from a cutting from a tree I'm standing underneath it right now. There's the leaf. This came from a cutting from a tree that was in a, I'm not sure I can reach the flowers on this one. A cutting from a tree that is in Hammock Park in Dunedin. Oh, let me find the flower that's open up here. Flowers a little bit older. Um, and then there is a non-native variety, or sort of, I would call polluted genetic variety, that's the, uh, Mexican firebush, that's more like this one here. You can see these flowers are much more like yellow in color than the native genotype. Um, I think this, this Latin name might be a Hamelia patens very variant uh, glabra. The leaves are smaller and they're more glabrous. They're they're shinier. But I mean it's still really good. I, I didn't I couldn't I didn't know what type this was. I think I actually bought this from the native nursery and it was a hybrid I think of the two growth habit is exactly the same in terms of the size and stuff like that um, but it's it's definitely not the native variety um, and then I got one more back here that's a little bit different that I wanted to show um, firebush get big they get pretty big they'll get to be um, over 10 feet tall um, they're almost like a large shrub small tree they're native to subtropical hammocks in uh, the central and southern part of the peninsula of Florida. So here's another one I have that is, uh, here, let me get in here and grab some, grab a leaf. <clears throat> this one was another one that was a, a cutting from a plant that was in Hammock Park in Dunedin. And you can see how big the foliage is on this one. And it has that same really dark red flower and a big berry. The berries are, you can see, I'll grab a little cluster of the berries here. Oops, here's the berries. Berries are not poisonous. They're actually people, I think you can cook with them. But these native ones have a bigger berry than that 
Glabrous uh, non-native variety. Um, you can see the trunk is back, back there. It's pretty good size. That one again was a cutting. Um, again, they're native to subtropical hammocks in the central to southern part of the peninsula. Most often found in more tropical areas. So coastal hammocks from say Pinellas County on the west coast down to the tip of the state and up into at least probably into Rivard um, on the other on the east coast. So they get big and the, the growth habit again is kind of a like a tall here's another one I have here it's like a tall shrub to a small tree they grow pretty fast um, and you'll see things that oh firebush you know they like to be in the they can take full sun well yeah they can survive in full sun they definitely can but they like to be in the shade they would much rather be in the shade they're native to shady hammock type environments so though they can survive in the sun strong sunlight they would rather be in the shade and they're going to look better they're going to grow much better in the shade and you can see ooh, the uh heliconian butterflies all the butterflies and the bees absolutely love this plant it's probably one of the best pollinator attractors for the landscape you can see here's the flower of that one but this one is probably my favorite one out of all of them and the native variety has you maybe could see it a little bit it has kind of a velvety slight hairiness to the leaf and the petiole over here then the non-native ones don't have that they're like globbers they're completely shiny they're not like hairy at all on the leaf surface. There's like the immature berries. But again, the butterflies, the bees, hummingbirds love this plant. It is a very good attractor for hummingbirds. Um, if you have like a shady area in your garden, it's just a really good plant. You can cut it back. Some people will cut it back hard, you know, every year but I, I don't, it'll just come back from a stump and it'll, you know, you can do it however you want it. You can make it much more bushy. You can train it to grow kind of like a tree. This one here, it's, <laughs> it's big. It, this one's probably 10 feet tall. Um, in coastal hammocks, they'll get really big. Like there's some trees in downtown St. Pete that are huge. They're like six inches in diameter and they're, you know, have a 20 foot spread. But, you know, they, they do really well in my yard here in this, like, shady environment. And, you know, I found them, again, at, like, Hammock Park in Dunedin. I found them in, uh, at Whedon Island. Uh, I found them in, in the wild. They're actually not a super common plant. Um, at Highlands Hammock, I've seen them. Um, I've seen them at... What was that place in Sarasota? Circus Hammock, I think it's called. Um, I've seen them at, but most of those areas are kind of like subtropical, um, coastal type influenced hammocks. If you find them a lot in the association, the, the other understory plants that you'll find them with is marlberry and wild coffee. So if you find a hammock that has a lot of marlberry and wild coffee in it, there's a really good chance it also is going to have firebush in it. Um, but you can see this is the big one here that this one grows. This this globrous variety seems to do better in strong sun than the native kind. Um, and, but, and it does maybe, I think it blooms, a, probably blooms a little more, which is why it's more widely used in the nursery trade. You can't really see it in the video, but there's a, there's bees all over this thing. It's real hot right now, so things are a little bit calmer in terms of the pollinator activity. But it's uh, it's this you can see all the blooms on it, and all these will turn to berries. And then in the 
in the fall and the winter, the catbirds and the, the wrens and everything, the birds love to eat the berries. And occasionally it will pop up from seed, but it doesn't, the seeds are tiny, like they're like dust inside of the berry. They're really, really small. And you can't grow them from seed relatively easily. They grow from cuttings easily. Um, but if you're doing a native landscape or you just want to even just totally ornamental variety or in a food forest, if you want to do something to attract pollinators, it's a really good plant. It grows quickly. Um, you know, this one's maybe a year and a half, two years old at most. Um, and it was a cutting that I, or actually, no, this one was a, a containerized plant that I bought from a nursery. <clears throat> but yeah, Hamelia patens, variance patens is the native variety and the Hamelia patens varying glabra is the, this type variety. I think this one, this one may be sort of, a, they'll hybridize. So it's not the cleanest genetics in terms of um, in the nursery trade, but you know, like Sweet Bay Nursery and Parish, they have the good native variety. Um, and again, <clears throat> you can see the berries that that this one makes her, they're a little bit smaller, but it's just a really awesome tree for hummingbirds, for all of your pollinators. Um, and it's beautiful, it's really beautiful. It's got a lot of ornamental value. In the native landscape in Florida, you'll see it planted a lot. And, um, commercial plantings and stuff it's gotten significantly more popular as years go by but you don't often see the native variety I've seen it some but if you you know if you have areas where you're under oak trees and stuff like that and you got a deep deep shade firebush grows really really good in that environment it really likes to be in the shade um, so like I said Hamelia patens nice Look at the bumblebee up there, just flying around. Really awesome native plant for the Florida landscape. And uh, I highly, highly recommend it, especially the native kind. Check it out.